Hello learners, welcome to the NIOS studio and I am Dr. Ritu Bakshi, Assistant Professor, Department of Educational Studies, Central University of Jammu and today I am with you with the topic, how children understand social science issues. In today's topic, I will be discussing about why to study social sciences, major themes of social sciences, why social sciences is perceived as a boring subject, how to make the subject interesting and how to make learning effective and long lasting. So dear learners, first of all, a very important thing which parents and children should ask to the teachers is, what do students learn in the social science class? Many students make their school curriculum for granted, but if they understand the basis and objectives for the subject matters they take up in a class, they might be able to better appreciate the facts and information and study harder. That means what we are going to teach and learn in the social sciences class is very important when we talk about the student and when we act the role of a teacher they would be able to understand why they are studying such information and therefore appreciate them better in the right context. We all know that with the student point of view, tell me I forget, show me I remember and involve me I understand. So dear learners, involving the students in learning of the social sciences subject is very important for making the clear understanding of the subject. This will make your learning very effective and long lasting. So teaching social science has many things which as a teacher you have to keep in mind that is social studies is more than a collection of facts for children to memorize. Social sciences or studies is also how we develop respect for various viewpoints and cultural beliefs. Social studies is the study of cultural, economic, geographic, environmental and political aspects of past, current and future societies. So my dear learners, social sciences is an understanding of how people, places and events came about. You can see in the picture that various events which occur in the world or in India, these are being covered in the social sciences subject because social sciences directly relates the subject with the social happenings and the society. And second, it is the understanding of how people can relate and respond to each other's needs and desires. In 1994, the National Council for the Social Studies developed new standards for teaching the social studies. Through 10 major themes, social sciences are taught in an integrated approach. So these 10 themes are culture, time, continuity and change, people, places and environment, individual development and identity, individuals, groups and institutions, power, authority and governance, production, distribution and consumption, science, technology and society, global connections, civic ideals and practices. So all these 10 themes cover a wide range of the content of the social sciences subject. Now one thing is very sure that in your student life also and in my student life also I perceive social sciences as a boring subject. Now the question arises why social sciences is so boring? My dear learners, it is not. The way it's traditionally being taught is boring. Didn't you hate history class when you were in school? Memorizing all those meaningless dates, names and places. At the beginning of the school year, not one of my students typically names social sciences as his or her favorite subject. And most kids don't even understand what the subject is about. 
so dear learners social sciences or social studies instruction should challenge the students to think about the events that have made our world the way it is that is the lesson should be so engaging and interacting note it that the lessons which you give to the students should engage the students and make your sessions very interactive so that no child could ever feel or find it boring this is very important challenge now there are many things which can make the social sciences interesting many teachers have trouble making social sciences interesting because they don't understand or like the subject themselves but there is a good news here you will learn how to get the students passionate about social sciences even when you have limited time resources or background information so passion for the subject is the foremost requirement for making your learning effective and long lasting some other things are also there to make the social sciences very interesting that is the primary purpose of the social sciences is to help young people develop so if we want to make the social sciences interesting we should know what is the purpose of social sciences it is to help young people develop the ability to make the reasonable decisions for the public good as citizens of the culturally diverse and democratic society in an independent world learning social sciences helps the students to understand human interactions that occurred in the past and are occurring now and that which are likely to occur in future that is we have to connect past present and future this may also help the students to develop and nurture the values that will make it more likely that they will be able to determine what the right thing is and how to do it especially when doing the right thing is difficult so social science is learning about decency respect courage and honor so these these things these values are to be inculcated in the students through the study of social sciences so it's very important to make the social sciences a interesting subject and there are many ways to make the social sciences interesting tell your students to imagine a particular moment in the history mentioned in the textbook this can help them to have a clear idea of the topic that is they have to imagine the particular moment they they need to go back to that moment imagine that moment this will make the learning effective and efficient act out the historical event that is give the task of acting out that historical event in the form of skits talk shows plays and these are very great ways to engage the students and motivate them to find a love for the social sciences bring a historical event to life by having students act out the particular event in history have students produce an uh, event and assign a student a specific role to present the class after each presentation let the students discuss what they have learnt this is the way to make the social sciences interesting dear students what next step you need to take care of is draw your students in with the technology technology has a way to motivate the students and keep them engaged whether you are teaching a lesson on geography history civics technology has a way to draw the students attention so inculcate technology infuse technology with your subject next will be make use of internet nowadays use of internet is uh, very much in uh, practice and on the one click of mouse the student is able to get the lot of information and tell your student how to manage the information which is directly linked with the knowledge management so making use of internet internet provides many websites on the educational topics uh, and the many have the fun games multimedia presentations quizzes etc on the educational topics all these really make bookish topics of fun for the students and help them to understand and retain the topics much better 
try a controversial topic. An effective tool for encouraging the critical thinking is to try a controversial topic, provide your students with a short background on any of the topics and let the debate begin. Write or say a statement that relates to the topic at hand and have each side plead their case. There is nothing like a fun debate to get the students uh, motivated to learn. That is, you need to create a controversial topic. You can also develop the students' interest and motivation in the social sciences by relating relevant content and current events to their daily lives. That is, the present content and relevant content is very important when we try to make the social sciences interesting. Be involved and discuss the concepts with them and give them examples of social studies from their daily lives. That is, they can relate to instead of just complaining that social sciences is boring. Give concepts uh, your own and twist them into a new topic. Do practical projects and experiments with them. Doing this really helps in understanding a topic instead of reading it all. Get it interesting books about different topics for the children is one of the beautiful way to make the social sciences very interesting and keep the books accessible so that they can take them out when bored and read them. Take your students to fun and interesting places like planetariums, zoos, wildlife sanctuaries, national parks, museums, botanical gardens to make their concepts clear. Yes, this is very important point because this, when we take the students to the outside world, this makes the learning real learning and this learning will be long lasting. Making useful notes plays a vital role in helping the students to learn easily with perfection. Update your students with the current events. Students can develop interest and motivation in the social studies by relating relevant content and current events to their daily lives. That means you motivate your students to relate the content with their daily lives. Encourage the students to do a collage work and take the census of any particular area to make the subject interesting. Sometimes it is the everyday places that can be educational and interesting that is your garden, your local nursery, the post office. So walk around your neighborhood and go to the local places of interest to make the subject interesting subject. Show them the videos and documentaries of the events covered in your syllabus. Uh, this will enhance the interest of the chapter or episode in history because history is very perceived as, history is being perceived as a very boring subject. So showing the videos and documentaries will make the learning very effective. Next is the curricula and pedagogy. Curriculum should be learner centers rather than teacher centered. That is, if we want to make the learning a fun, it should be student centered. It should not be teacher centric. And we, we should also, the, the curriculum should also, we need to make or frame the curriculum which connects the school with real life situations. That is, curriculums curriculum should contain such content which directly relates the school subject with the real life situations and curriculum should also focus on understanding rather than on memorization, drill and practice. Designing the learning environments, this is also one of the major point which makes the social sciences very interesting subject and the main principle while we are designing the learning environments are to make the students active learners to collaborate with other students, to participate in meaningful activities and to relate new information to the prior knowledge. These are the principles when we design the learning environments. So active involvement, there are many prerequisites for the social science learning when we talk of the active involvement of the student and main features of active involvement are attention, observation, memorization understanding and setting goals. Skills for the active learner. Now, how a teacher can judge that the learner is active or not? 
So, there are many skills. If a teacher is able to make the child skillful, that is the child is able to observe, identify and classify the things, that is the teacher has been able to inculcate the requisite skills which as a learner he needs to uh, get, that is observation, identification and classification. At the elementary stage, the children should be engaged in the activities that would give them in developing an understanding about the natural and social environment. Understanding at this level should be based on observation and illustrations rather than abstractions. Illustrations need to be drawn from the children's physical, biological, social and cultural aspects of life. The skills namely observation, identification and classification are important to become an active learner at the elementary stage. So, understanding at elementary stage is based on the illustration and observation of various aspects and these aspects are physical, biological, social and cultural. That means, there are four major uh, broad aspects which we need to take care when we are teaching social sciences uh, that is physical, biological, social and cultural. But the question is how to learn these skills? Avoid the situations where the students are passive listeners for the long period of time. Many a times we observe in the classroom that students are passive and only the teacher is active. So, this situation should be avoided. Provide the students with hands on activities such as experiments, observations, projects, role plays, etc. Encourage the participation of students in the classroom discussions and other collaborative activities. Organize the school visits to museums, zoo and technological parks. Allow the students to make some decisions about what to learn and how to learn. Assist the students in formulating the learning objectives that are consistent with their previous experiences, interests and aspirations. That is learning these skills is very important when a teacher is teaching the social sciences subject. Now we have talked about the social participation, now what is social participation and why social participation is very important. Dear learners, you can see in the picture that the students are participating in Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and they are actually by participating they are able to understand what Swachh Bharat Abhiyan is and what is their social responsibility towards the society. So, social participation is very important for learning a social process and learning process involves the participation in social life. So, when we talk of social sciences, participation is in the social life is the mandatory requirement for effective and efficient learning in the so, uh, social studies. Process of social participation is the, uh, that is when we talk of participation in social process, it begins early when the parents interact with their children. Through these interactions, children acquire the behaviors that enable the, them to become effective members of the society. What I mean to say is parents interact with the children and then the children acquire the requisite behavior and they become the effective members of the society. So, the aim of teaching social sciences to the learners is to making them effective and vibrant member of the society to make that uh, learner a, a resourceful human being as well as a responsible human being. So, the parents should interact with the students and students acquire the behaviors and at last they become the effective members of the society. According to Vygotsky in 1978, the way children learn is by internalizing the activities, habits, vocabulary and ideas of the members of the community in which they grow up. The establishment of a fruitful collaborative and cooperative environment is an essential part of the school learning. So, to make this subject very interesting, the teacher has to assign a group work, create the environment to share the resources, teaching cooperation with the students is the important factor, 
interacting with each other and expressing on certain topics that is students need to express on various topics. And a very important point in learning social sciences is social school community linkages. Whatever we are learning in the school, this has to be applicable in the social setting. That is the linkage between school and community is one of the major objectives of learning social sciences. So, dear learners, what we need to do is, we need to engage the students in the meaningful activities. There are so many activities, but what is important is to engage the students in the meaningful activities. Best learning occurs when students participate in the useful activities, when they participate in the relevant activities, and when they participate in the culturally responsive activities. What is the meaning here? That avoid the activities which are not meaningful, which are vague, which are not necessary. So, the participation in useful, relevant and culturally responsive activities makes the learning better. Individuals learn in context, the child's community and local environment from primary context in which learning takes place. The trees, the birds, the fruit, the festivals, the rituals, etc., which the children observe or experience in the world around them makes a long-lasting impact. The knowledge they already have and they have bring into the classroom provide the basis for their understanding and learning the social sciences. We need to relate new information to prior knowledge, that is relating the information to the previous knowledge in order to happen the learning better and faster. Uh, the students need to connect their own knowledge with the prior knowledge. Connections are like building bridges between old and new. Pre-assessments determines the prior knowledge, whereas connections provide the link between the old knowledge and new knowledge. Helping students learn to transfer. Transference of learning, what we have learned previously should be transferred to our new learning. That is application in the real life situations. This is very important. One subject matter area to other. Students should learn how to transfer learning in one subject matter and to transfer that to other subject matter. It helps the students see the transfer implications. For example, we are talking of a transport system. So, students should be involved in toy, car, print making or sound pictures, bulletin board activities, video presentations, shape vehicles matching the vehicles to the mode of transportation. So, my dear learners, today we have learnt about many things which makes the learning very interesting and very effective and we have learnt about that uh, how we can, how a teacher can make the learning interesting and by storytelling, by observation, by assigning the assignments, by role plays and by going to various museums and visiting the outside world. These are the various measures through which we can make the learning effective and long lasting. Thank you so much.